Hi. It is I. John underscore Silva underscore with another Silva decodes. Um, this time we have Kaifos asking, uh, I was wondering how you create these type of artworks. They seem childish, but I love the style. Okay, they seem childish, but I love the style. Hi, Lenny's, how are you doing? Um, how do you create this type of works? Uh, I wish you were a bit more like, do you mean the texture? I don't know if Kaifo's in the chat, probably not. Um, I'll try to answer everything. Okay, so the first thing that make it makes it look good, you may think that it's a rendering, but actually it's the shapes being used. Uh, I mean, that's kind of true for most images, to be honest. But what you want to do is make sure that this paints, there you go, it is painting. What you want to do is, is grab a brush, it doesn't really matter which one, um, I like geometric, <laughs> it's a, it's kind of geometric brushes. I, li I like squared brushes, triangle brushes, um, of, of course, round brushes, this is a geometric brush, but uh, you know what I mean. Other than round brushes, I, I like triangular, triangular and, and squared brushes. Um, I feel like you can begin with that and make sure that you're, uh, shapes contrast it's all about simplicity that's the short answer as far as like the drawing goes I'll do a little section here from the character right so you start by first placing what you what you want in the image right so you kind of like build it's kind of like sketching or you're building the image a little bit um, let's let's do that Right, in this case, it's a re uh, like a, a tall rectangle shape. And then you have two half circles for the years. Uh, the more you simplify a shape, the more quote-unquote childish my look. Um, we'll get into the colors, the, color, the colors being bright and like have a nice contrast to them, makes it appear playful, which can appear, you know childish and then the whole texture also everything helps each other right everything helps each other so i'm actually gonna let's do this a little bit better we'll start with the basic shapes as i was saying you draw it honestly you can start with line art um i personally think that for this kind of style if i was doing it i would start with um what usually artists call like a sculpting way of painting, which is like you build shapes with actual with the paint, right, with a brush instead of setting it into a into a really small brush and do the the line art for it. Uh, I'd say you'd be more successful making blocky, blobby shape shapes first, and then kind of like erase away to the shapes that you want. Uh, however, it doesn't. It's not. You don't have to. Uh, you can still achieve the same result through line art. I feel like doing this gets your result faster, though. So we'll have like this basic shape, and then he has like the little straw hat, All right? So for the straw hat, is literally just again half a circle and like a flat disc, um, flat disc around him. And again, it's really important that you think of contrasting shapes. So we have. A rectangular shape for the focal point which is his head and everything else seems to be either disc shaped um, round uh, fucking just softer soft looking things uh, in the image or soft looking shapes in the in the whole image as you may notice even the coffee mug is, is round and the handle of the coffee mug and the, the the stairs the wooden stairs look very cute and round and soft and like like nothing would really hurt you not even his head having sharper edges even the edges are like rounded so everything feels very safe very very friendly there's nothing really sharp uh in the scene uh, which makes it work really, really well with uh, the head, which is just a square. Um, let me 
do the body. Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit like ass, or like I smoke crack. Um, it's because I did smoke crack. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I didn't sleep a lot today, but I'm feeling good. All right. So we have the body. We have crack cocaine, bro. We have the arms, which will be... I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I'll just draw the, the main character, but you, you get the point, right? I'll draw the arms here. Um, and everything, uh, I feel like the artist tries to make everything fluid. So like, and once again, no sharp edges for the most part. Everything has like a, a sort of like a smooth line to it, a smooth curve, you know, surface, uh, etc. So for the eyes, you have like, even the eyes are, are rounded, rounded up. So bloop, bloop. Like so, and then you have the little, the little nose, and the little smile. Smile, chat. There you go. Just be happy. Easy clap. Uh, once you have this, all right. Once you have all of this information, you, I would recommend it. Do it on a separate layer. I didn't do that because I'm an idiot. Um, but you not being an idiot, you want to keep like the face shape, the the face. One layer, the years, both both of them in one, uh, we in in another layer, etc., etc. Right, every part of the of the image you kind of want to keep it separate because I will now in a very scuffed manner select just that flat. I'm making a new layer, and now I can just paint within the selection and not worry about anything else. Right. Um. So for this step, um, there's multiple things you can do. You can use the multiply layer, which I believe it may be the first pass to all of this may have been a multiply layer. Uh, and you can just, I, it might not even be in the layer. It could have been like directly, which would make a lot of sense. But I'd say this is pretty close. I like to still use multiply layers even if the artist painted it directly, just because I don't know, I feel like I have more control over it, but you, you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm just gonna give the little you know, little saturated uh, gradient and of course separate the the side of the head. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust the ears because I, I, I drew it not so good um yeah and then you, you you'll see that the texture and stuff uh we'll get to that in a moment what i am gonna give him is just a subtle there's like a subtle curve here to the side of the face actually it's not even that dark it's like super super subtle here to the side of the face and we'll get to the highlights a bit a bit uh in just a second and the texture too um now I'm going to do the same for the hat. There you go. He's wearing a nice hat. Smile. And I'm just going to do exactly the same. Grab... On a, honestly, you could grab a smooth rectangular brush like this one. Or you could go already ahead. I'm just showing you multiple ways you can go about it. And have a texture brush ready for the first kind of like pass like so and let's do the same for the body All right um and actually for the face for the face i will oh it's reading it's reading that so let's hide for a second yeah i i, I can actually like use this it's fine Wait, uh, normal, I'm gonna select that, and now, yeah, this is fine. Can use a little bit of the texture initially, and I'll do the same for the ears. You get, you get, you get what I mean, right? Although the ears I need to adjust a little better. Also, this is more saturated. Uh, I'll explain the texture now. Actually, no, I need to give the highlights, and then I'll explain the texture Oh, I forgot the nose too. I'm an idiot. There you go. 
draw the side of the noose there you go this might be actually too saturated that's better it's again the nose follows the shape of his um, head which just helps the overall character uh, the design however I would argue that maybe adding a nose of a different shape could have helped a, a bit better I'm also blending a, a little bit here with a with a smudge tool just a little bit all right he's smiling he's happy he's having a time of his life uh, so there you go just a little outline for now and we'll come back to the whole rendering thing in a second uh, the hat needs a little bit a little bit of this too oh instead of using a smudge brush you can also erase with a soft uh, eraser which is you know you can achieve the same result if you don't like using smudge brush because I know uh, plenty of people who don't so this is another way to go go around like making a gradient out of your initial texture uh, or initial rendering is just you know doing exactly that you do a brush stroke and then you erase away um, which is pretty good too uh, hello cat how you doing hi we just started the stream starting with silver decodes once again, don't forget to post questions ahead of time, chat. Don't wait for me to answer uh, these questions to then post them. Do it ahead of, ahead of time. Um, okay, so once this is done, uh, I'll make a new layer. Honestly, with the new layer, you can uh, just do it manually. Uh, I still like to use Linear Dodge Layer. Linear Dodge layer. I'm pretty sure that although the artist may have done it manually, I, I have a. I, for, I still need to the goddamn ears. I forgot. But I have a feeling that that the artist may have done it uh, manually. But what you want to do is give everything everything in the image. You give just a little bit of a like rim to it, whether it's bright or dark. So he has that little like you know, bevel, I don't really know what's the English term for it, but there's always a little bit of that, right? And then for the hat, he has this yellow, there you go. So I would initially, uh, having a chalky brush like this helps a lot. It doesn't really matter which one you use, there's like a billion of them out there. So it'll be up to your preference. But in this case, I'm just using this one. Um, there you go. Did I miss a lot? No, we literally just started. I, I kept my introduction pretty sharp today. Because uh, I, I got a lot I want to do today on stream. So people are still joining in. Nice little rim job. <laughs> True! True. Um, all right. Um, okay, we'll we'll let this be for now. I just want to adjust the ear because it's triggering me. I don't really need to, but it's good. It's good. Okay, so now the texture, which is going to be the final thing. Obviously, mine is a lot more scuffed than the original because I don't want to spend a lot of time in it. But uh, da, 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 da. is there anything else before I move to the texture? No. Okay, so that scratchy texture that you're seeing, I'll, I'll make a new layer. That scratchy texture that you're seeing, I, it's really just a brush. Um, I would recommend, a, it, it, I would recommend a rake type of brush. It's what they're called. Th this kind of like streaky looking brushes you want to make the um, here i'll lower down my flow you want to make the let's let's take that away the flow here i'll show you 
you want to make the flow I'll put it right next there you go you want to make the flow really 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 low percentage because any textured brush the lower the percentage is uh, of flow the more granular your brush strokes will be versus opacity opacity just makes doesn't really change the brush it just changes while the opacity but um it, ma it makes it like your brush strokes will be watered down. You don't want that. You want to make your brushes look like they're dry. And Flow does that to all of the texture brushes. So what we're doing is... Um, so I have this rake brush. Look how, look how much... Uh, I'll do a brush stroke here. Wait, can you see that? Yes. I'll do a brush stroke here with Flow at 50%, 15%. And this is the same brush with the full full flow All right so you can tell it's like it's like it it changes your brush brush so much that it, it's like a new brush honestly so with that in mind you want to be very gentle especially if this is your first time always be very gentle on the first time Uh, actually, this brush sucks really bad. So I'm going to get another one like it. The, again, there's a million of them. Uh, here's here's another one. There you go. Oh, this one is perfect. There you go. There you go. And now, uh, you need to build... By the way, you need to build up the, the texture as well. It's not... In fact, I'm... It would be better if it was in Multiply. Yeah, so I set it in multiply, and now I'm just gonna erase it a little bit where it's a little where you don't want you don't want it too heavy, and you don't want it too dark and desaturated. Make sure there's a lot of saturation to it. I should have brought the col the color picker here. Fuck, but this is here quite sat. Actually, it's not even that saturated. This is, yeah okay, so this is even better like that, and you wanna give it that sort of texture to it of course like spend time with it actually spend proper time doing all of these textures uh and stuff i'm gonna hear on the hat there's like another one like that and for the hat i'm i'm pretty confident that what they did or what she or he did rather was uh, i'm gonna reselect this um was that he he selected he or she selected the whole hat and just used the brush. Actually, I'm gonna increase the flow for this and just use the brush and kind of like did bold or yeah, pretty bold brush strokes and either erase them or whatever. But yeah, that's another way to go. Another way to go about it. Um, hey, D Mage, what's up, man? What's up, me? Uh, one last thing I want to mention. It's a little detail. Okay, so you do that for the whole image. Uh, you can either set it to multiply or set it to what I said before, which was linear dodge. If you want to make your brush strokes appear, uh, like for example, I'll, I'll make a new layer. I'm making a new layer now set to linear dodge. And you can like, you could have potentially make lighter brush strokes uh, like that if you wanted to um right and the same would go for not just the hat but like if you want to bevel the lighter side a bit more actually the flow is too high now i'm gonna lower it down there you go see so this gives it a bit more dimension which i'm pretty sure that the artist must have done at least a little bit all right so you just pick the lighter color and and done that um one last thing i want to mention as a detail it is um, the little corners of everything have always a lighter and darker value. For example, I'll zoom in on the eye. So the eye here, it's it's a very minor detail, but I feel like it's important to mention. Like the eye here will have a little like sort of lighter basil here and a darker one for the almost like it was carved, you know. Which I'm pretty sure that's the effect that the artist wanted to go for. All right, there's a little 
like little carve on everything brighter and darker depending on obviously this then depends on your light source and its angle but yeah it's gonna have a little bit of that in most everything um like even here on the ear is very subtle but like at the edge of the ear it has a little bit has a little bit of that you will notice um i guess the very very final thing is just there's a little bit of blending here and there like um i need another texture brush for this yeah this one is fine still so there's a couple of areas where just on a normal layer the artist goes over and makes it kind of crayon like you know th that sort of soft but chalky looking blend that crayons do a lot if you ever painted with crayons that is um uh, th there's gonna be a little bit of a, a blending like that uh and this brush this is like a default photoshop brush you can get it anywhere and there's a little there's a little bit of that all right so yeah this is like actually a pretty pretty cool um question and like very very cute very very cute um i i've i've enjoyed this i've enjoyed this so this has been the answer for kaifos's question how to create this type of works on the reference on the reference on the right once again don't forget chat if you're a sub for silver decodes you can ask questions ahead of time even when i'm offline and you'll get answered first uh, amongst many other perks so thank you for watching this video and i'll 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 see you on the next one